welcome to the Yarn and New Girl podcast. I'm Janine, also known as Yarn and New Girl, and this is my channel where I talk about all the knitting I'm doing mostly. Sometimes I'll show you guys a little bit of crochet or cross stitch or sewing, but mostly knitting all the time, 24 seven around here, you know. So that's just what we're doing today is talking about that. It is April 9th. I keep forgetting what day it is when I, I've been trying to record this now a couple times and I just keep forgetting what day it is. It's Tuesday. It's beautiful here. A little chilly, but um, I always like that because I still enjoy uh, bundling up in all my cozy sweaters. And, you know, with the change in the weather and everything comes less chances to wear all the things that we knit. So, Hopefully, um, you guys are having a beautiful Tuesday wherever you are as well. It, if you're looking for me on the internet, I can be found on Instagram as Yarn and You, on Facebook as Yarn and You, on Ravelry as Yarn and You Girl. That's all E W E, uh, not Y O U. And I do. We do have the podcast does have a. Ravelry group where I will do giveaways and things like that. I don't post the show notes there anymore. I'm just not very good at remembering to put them there, but I do always post show notes in the description box. So anywhere, anything that I talk about, I will post the name of the pattern, uh, try to link it if I can, uh, shop or whatever. So that can always be found in the description box down here. Um, I just have not been very active on the Ravelry group. So if you go over there and check it out, it's not got a lot of activity going on, but I've had an idea recently that we need to do another knit along and I kind of wanted to throw an idea out there to you guys. I have been really thinking about casting on a Pinguono. So Pinguono is Stephen West, the, you know, um, many colored crazy coat. And I had been thinking about it and then I've been watching some podcasts and people have just been talking about it too. Not that they're making it, but they've just dropped it here and there, like the, um, the pattern and how they want to do it and this and that. And I, I've been wanting to do it for a really long time. So I bought the pattern the other day and I kind of started pulling out stuff in my stash to see if I could come up with something. And I really kind of want to do it. I'm not been I've been having a hard time being inspired <clears throat> uh, to knit or to finish things lately and I it's I think it's because the things that I've been currently working on I'm not they're not you know grabbing me so I'm close to being done to with multiple projects and I just need to finish them but I'm not inspired to finish them so and I wonder if it's the change in weather or just that I want to do other things but um, I need something to kind of keep my interest and keep me going. And the Pinguono has always been something that has sort of been uh, inspiring to me and a little scary at the same time because you don't know what your color is going to come out as when you start multiplying multiple, you know, putting different strains and different colors of yarn together. You just don't really know how it's going to turn out. And part of that is a little fearful, but I have so much yarn and I really think I could come up with a very cool coat. So upstairs in my closet where I have all my personal stuff, I have a couple large hanks of a cream color alpaca, 100% alpaca. It's a fingering weight, I believe. Um, and I think I have maybe 1800 yards just in the cream. And I was going to make a sweater out of it. I thought, oh, that's perfect. You know, I'll have plenty. But I thought maybe that I could run that through um, the entire coat. That way the coat has like a lighter tone to it. Because I really like his light toned version that he has um, when you see it. And then mix that cream with different colors. And then the cream color will kind of mute whatever other colors I'm adding. So that's sort of the thought process. I've been pulling some stuff out. But I wanted to know if you guys wanted to do a knit along with me. I haven't, I don't have any details or anything about when to start. I was just thinking about it the other day and thought I would throw it out there and see if anybody else had really been wanting to knit this coat and just try and get your guys' ideas behind it and 
if we want to go ahead, let's just do it and we'll start it and I'll come to up with some prizes and things like that along the way. So message me um, in the video here and let me know if that is something you're interested in doing. And if it seems like there's enough interest, then I will post a, a thread in the Ravelry group about um, the Penguino knit along and we'll start a hashtag and all that other stuff. So uh, let just like I said, let me know in the description box down below or in the, you know, messages, whatever. Reply to the video. I don't know. You know, whatever it is. You guys, you guys all know that. So that's one of the things I've been thinking about knitting as um, something to pull me back into inspiration. I do have some things that I have finished, which is good. One of them is gone already. So I'll try to insert a photo the pattern is C is for cat, and I believe it is a free pattern. Um, I'm not quite sure who um, who the author is, so I'm gonna look that up real quick and then we'll get back to you. Okay, so it's C is for cat by Emily Ivy, and I will try to insert a photo here of my finished object, but it, I would started it a while back and if you guys follow me on Instagram you'll um, if you go back through my feed you'll be able to see I had like the face and everything done this was like two years ago probably so it'd been one of those whips that has been sitting around and not getting any love on and I decided that okay I need to start moving through some of these or ripping some of these out I if I'm not gonna do them then I need to just commit to not doing them and that seems kind of like an oxymoron, right? Commit to not doing something. Um, and just like rip it all out and, and use the yarn for something else. So I already have done that with the Guthrie sweater um, that I was working on. I already pulled out my shoe, shoey shrug um, and a couple other things. I just, um, if I'm not feeling it, I'm trying to just move on, do something else. If I'm not inspired, move on. So I decided I'm gonna finish this. I really only had arms, legs, and a tail to make because I had already done the face, I would already done the body. The face and the body were already attached. And yeah, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't gonna take me very long to finish the rest of it. So my niece's birthday was coming up. The cat was originally gonna be for her two years ago for Christmas, but of course I didn't finish it. So it'd been just sitting around. And I decided, okay, I'm gonna finish this. She's a little older now. She's just turning 12, so, or no, excuse me, she's turning 11. So that's a little, you know, maybe a little too old for stuffed animals, but he could just sit on her desk and like keep her company or whatever. It's not like that big of a deal. So I finished that up for her and gave it to her for her birthday. And I think that she liked it. I think I gave her, I had something else for her. We had something else for her as well, but it was just something that I've been meaning to do. And I thought, you know, let's get it done. So I think that she liked it. It was done in a purple Donegal tweed. I don't I didn't have any ball bands or anything left. So the main body was purple Donegal tweed. And then the accent pieces, like the tip of the tail, the cat's paws, things like that were in this 100% um, wool, uh, gray color that I got at Oregon Flock and Fiber like years ago and I bought giant ball like hanks of it and there was no tags no um fiber content it was literally like just spun from the sheep and really rustic and and you know nothing um commercially or available independently that I could even think about putting a name to but it just been something again that I had in my stash. So it turned out really cute, I thought, and I think that she liked it too. So the pattern again, I believe it was free. It's C is for Cat by Emily Ivy, and it's available on Ravelry. So that was my first finished object. My second finished object is something you guys haven't seen at all. And it, um, it was also a free pattern on Ravelry and it's um, this first weekend or last weekend in April or I can't even talk today you guys I'm very blah, 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 all over the place um, so sorry about that and I want to yawn too 
Ooh. This is a good beginning, isn't it? Uh, okay, so <laughs> anyway, um, the first part of April last weekend in March, my husband and family were in Spokane for the weekend. We, both my husband and I are pharmacists in our regular jobs. And every year we have to get a certain amount of continuing education. You know, a lot of professional career people need to do stuff like this, whether you're in education, medicine, whatever. So you have to kind of keep up with what's happening in your sector of the industry. So we have to get 15 continuing education credits each year. One of them, one hour has to be law. And law is always the most difficult to get because there's always a lot of information on therapeutics, which is like how medicines work, uh, things like that. But it's really hard to find law ones that you can go to. So one of the organizations in Washington puts on a program every year. It's uh, New Drugs, New Laws, and it's a full day educational CE where you sit in uh, and you basically had a lecture all day long and you get end up getting eight hours of credit and your law credit is included in that. So uh, for the past two years, we've gone to the one that they held up in Seattle and that was always really fun. We would just end up making a weekend out of it. We would, you know, ship send the kids off with Nana for the weekend and then Matt and I would go up. Well, the one that was being held in Seattle this year was too early. I think it was too close to the So Expo for my liking because I had so much going on for that that we decided to do the one that was in Spokane, which was this last weekend of March, first part of April. So my husband, his first degree was at Gonzaga. So that's in Spokane, private school. He, um, so we thought, oh, well, it'll be fun. We'll take the family, it's spring break. We'll take the family and we'll um, walk around the campus one of the days if the Gonzaga team is in the you know playoffs, which they usually are for basketball, we can maybe go watch the game at a bar in town and that would be really fun. So we did go to Spokane, we rented a house, that was great, although my husband got sick so we didn't get to watch the Gonzaga game at a pub and then the house that we were staying at didn't have any kind of cable uh, or uh, appropriate way that we could watch uh the game and it was you know which was fine because they ended up losing anyway so whatever but um while we were there i stopped at a yarn store there because you know that's what we do right we go places we haven't been before and we make and drag our families to all the yarn stores in the area so i stopped at paradise fiber and one of the things that I needed to get was, you guys know my new blue sweater that I did in Brooklyn Tweed um, with the turtleneck and the pattern on front that I'm working on writing up. I've been wearing that all the time. I love that sweater so much. It fits so nice and it's warm without being heavy. And I had worn it Saturday morning when we went for a walk. And when I came in, I took it off to like take a shower or something and I went to put it back on and I noticed that I had a big hole in the armpit area and the armpit um, I think what had happened is either a, I didn't secure it tightly and then when I went to pull it on you know sometimes you're like adjusting things and in your sweater and yeah and I pulled too hard I think and I ripped it the stitches here so I wanted to get some yarn oh it made me almost seriously cry like I was so so upset by having that hole in my armpit and I was worried you know that it was gonna uh, unravel although with the Brooklyn Tweed it is 100% wool so the stitches really hold together fairly well they don't like drop down like a lot of other um, slipperier yarns so I needed to find something that I could use to help sew it back together so I could wear it again and I wanted it to kind of match even though you know if I was gonna oh god you guys this is not good <sighs> <laughs> I think I'm talking too much again and not breathing enough 
anyway, so I needed to find something that I thought that I could do to stitch it back together. And then in case you saw it, it kind of looked similar. So I went to, we went to Paradise Fiber. They had some Jameson uh, Shetland, which I think, I think it's Shetland. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I thought it might be in here. Oh yeah. So Shetland Spindrift, uh, very much like the uh, Brooklyn Tweed Loft. I thought as far as composition and um, texture and the way it was spun and everything. So I bought this color. It's Nighthawk and it's turquoise -y and looked very similar to my sweater that I had. I was only going to need a teeny tiny bit, but um, I figured I could do something with this. 20, it's a 25 gram skein. I could use it and get some more and use a, do it in a color work something or other I've been kind of wanting to do stuff with this as it is so anyway I figured okay no big deal I'll buy some of that and that'll help like um you know fix my sweater but when I was there I also found some Malabrigo and it's the Malabrigo oh, what's it called Caracol it's their it's basically like Rasta but um wrapped in this black netting almost so I got a couple different colors but this is one of them so you can see how it's like wrapped in the netting so this color I bought two skeins of this color and this is Diana and let's see yeah I bought two skeins they are like super bulky 90 I think they're 90 yards 150 grams yeah so I just thought they were fun and I was having a hard time picking colors because um yeah I wanted all of them they had this light light blue one they had these and then they had this um lettuce it's called this color is lettuce green and I really thought this color was so cool I still need to block this but this is kind of so it's a cowl it used two skeins of the lettuce color and it's the rainbow twist cowl by Ty Win. I think is the last name I think is the I think that's how you pronounce it it, um, it was a free pattern on Ravelry called rainbow twist and they used Rasta um, as the base pattern you know for their yarn but or for their pattern sample but and then they also used a variegated but I thought this would be cool and then they also used just one skein so you could have made just a single um, loop but I ended up doing a double it's kind of this I don't know I've been really attracted to greens like this lately not normally what I go for but um, this is where I'm gravitating toward color wise this these days so it's just this nice like chunky um, cozy warm cowl uh, like I said free pattern on Ravelry very simple it does require a provisional cast on um, if you choose if you want you know I guess you don't have to you could just cast on normal and then seam it together but I did do a provisional cast on and um, I used a, the pattern called for US size 17 needles but I used a US size 15 because I don't have 17s and I thought oh, okay 15 is going to be just fine um, and I like I said I have not blocked it or anything I just finished it two days ago and I wore it yesterday just to kind of get a feel for it and see if I liked it so and I do so I'm not sure if that's what's going to happen with the other two skeins if I'm going to do another cowl like this or something else but um, anyway that was a quick knit quite satisfying to get it done and have something to show for uh, you know all the stuff I've been doing so I did that that is my other finished object and I almost had a third finished object if I had a couple extra minutes this morning I would have gotten it done but this is something also that you guys haven't seen I decided I don't know why but I got it in my head that I needed to make something for my nephew for his birthday he's gonna be three I think in 
I think he's three in May. It's May 9th, if I remember correctly. And I make him hats and stuff like that. But I thought I kind of wanted to make this baby like sweater or this kid sweater. It's called Elwood. And I don't know the name, the name of the author again. <laughs> I'm so bad, you guys. I never, ever remember. Um, give me a second and I'll get it. Okay, I got it. Elwood by Jenny Weeb. And it is a pay for pattern on Ravelry. And I had been seeing a couple, I think I follow the hashtag um, sweater knitting or something on Instagram. And I'd been seeing a couple of these pop up and they just look so cute. And I don't have any little people, hardly any little people left in my life to knit sweaters for. So I, and I've been feeling like I wanted to make him something like that. So I'm almost, almost done with this. And you guys will see like how I, how far I've gotten. So this is it so far. All the ends still need to be woven in and stuff, but um, I did this in Sweet Georgia's, the um, Superwash Worsted. The gray color is Snow, Snow, Snowfall, I think. And the green color is lettuce. And I literally have one more gray stripe here, one more green stripe, and then the cuff. And then I need to weave in all the gabillion ends. That's a lot of ends. And it has these, I did the buttonholes, and I've got the button band on the other side. And it's just this cute, cute little shawl collar. And I got some buttons that I thought were adorable. And it came in a pack on Etsy, um, a pack of eight, I think, and I only needed four, or maybe ten. Oh, no, it's ten, yeah. I only needed four. It's by An Angela's Line Laser Engraving. So she's on Etsy, and there's her information, which I'll also put in the um, description box down below. But she does wooden buttons that are... Um, I guess laser engraved. So these are the buttons that I got. And they're these cute like plaid. Let's see if you can get a good look at plaid lasered. Woo! There, look. My eyes. <laughs> they are so cute though. I was looking all over for, you know, just nice buttons. And I was originally thinking of like the leather ones that you know, are covered leather and then have the little cracks, but look also like a, almost like a tic-tac-toe board on them. But then I saw these and I thought, okay, these will be super cute and they're unique and um, not very expensive. I think it was $8 for the 10 buttons, honestly, um, for having them custom done. That I thought was pretty good. So, you can see what I mean? Super cute, huh? The little plaid stripes and stuff. Oh. So I have eight, uh, 10 of those. I'm only going to need four, so I'll be able to maybe throw them on something else, um, you know, down the road. Who knows? So those are super cute. And the sweater pattern, it's fairly easy to follow. It, it doesn't give you, like when you pick up your stitches along the side, it doesn't tell you you know, how many to pick up. So you really, and that's trouble for me sometimes with cardigans because I want to know, I want my one side to be exactly like my other side. But um, it does give you the ratio of like picking up, you know, three stitches for every four rows or something like that. So I did try to stick with that and I did try to make sure that um, I had that. So I'm hoping it will fit. She said he wears a three and this is, I made the size four and it's done on US sevens for the body and US sixes for the cuff. And I just thought it was so, so cute. And I really hope that she likes it for him and that it fits. That's really the, the biggest concern is that it fits and that I place the buttons on properly because I've had trouble with button placement on things in the past that I need still need to fix and years and years later. And I never wear the sweater because <laughs> the buttons aren't properly <laughs> aligned. And all I need to do is cut the buttons off and do them again. But I have not done them. But anyway, 
that's just my dilemma. No big deal. <laughs> so that is the Elwood sweater by Jenny Weeb. And that was a brand new cast on in the last three weeks that I am flying through. But again, wasn't really, um, nothing's really like been inspiring me to, you know, work on all the time. So I don't know. I need to come up with something. That's why I thought the penguono would be fun. Like kind of, I don't know, just get, figure out something because I'm not feeling inspired lately. I have worked a little bit on my water clover, which is the pom-pom quarterly, the summer or spring quarter one. I don't know if they actually, it's the botanical issue. And it's water clover, which I think you guys have all seen this one, but let me show it to you. If you can't remember what I'm talking about, it is a crochet top that is super duper cute and the flowers and everything very very excited about that um the i've gotten a little bit further i'm still i think the last time you guys saw it i would only maybe uh one repeat in and i'm on the third repeat now but it's still not very big but you can really see the definition of the flowers and how it's coming out. So um, I'm thinking that's gonna fit really nice too if I you know, stretch it over my chest and everything. But I'm worried about how long I need to make it. So I'm still thinking that I need to maybe add an extra repeat before I do the front and the back, but I'm just not 100% sure. So I am using for the yarn, Hempathy um, by Elizabeth Lavold in the Paris green color, which is this kind of aqua, marine, blue, green, whatever you want to call it. And Hempathy is, I believe it's a DK weight. And I think the pattern called for a sport, um, but it seems to be my gauge seems to be coming out fairly well and I'm using a two point let's see I feel like an old person these days I can't even read things anymore without like you know bringing them back and forward and back and forward uh 2.5 millimeter crochet hook to do that and it's slow going it's taking me a little while. The yarn's a little um, difficult to work with because it's a little splitty, but the Hempathy is a hemp cotton modal blend. It will be super nice for summer, um, have like a layering piece on top of a dress or something like that. And I think it's meant to be not like a super long top. So I am still working on that. I've made uh, progress. I really, really think the little flowers are just beautiful and how they're coming out but it is a bit time consuming and that is, um, but I'm, I'm still working on that. I'm still very interested in that. And that's in that pom pom quarterly uh, botanical issue. The last thing I've been working on is the um, Vertices Unite and I'm almost done, you guys. This is actually um, very exciting to be almost done with this. However, I'm still debating on color for the border. Oh, and of course I'm in the middle of a darn row. That would, that would be great um, if I could not be in the middle of a row. I'm gonna pause and finish that row so that I can actually show this to you properly because it's quite big. Okay, woohoo, finished it. Um, that was like two seconds to you guys and no time for me, right? Um, okay. So this is Vertices Unite by Stephen West. And I think it's actually upside down. I feel like this must be the top part of it. So I'm on this very last section over here. It's just a short row section that I'm working on. And this was section D, I believe you guys saw last time. And then section C and section Oh wait, no, that must be F, E, D, this C, this purple one, this bottom one here is B, and this big one up here is A. So, very cool, and I really, really like it, but I'm feeling like it needs a pop of color for the edge. Like, 
I almost want to do like a bright yellow or something around the edge of it. I feel like it needs something, you know, something more. It's just all very blues and purples and pale, and it really, really needs that excitement. What do you guys think? Yellow? Yellow? I kind of think yellow would be cool. I've got this really bright, sparkly yellow that I think would be great. Because it would kind of pick up on some of the yellow that's in the pink one here. And also in the creamy white one, there's flecks of yellow that you can kind of see. But it's hard to, hard to tell. So I really like it, though. I think it's going to be great. Um, it's going to be a nice size. And not like too funky to wear, I don't think. So once it's all, you know, mixed up. But I think that the yellow would really give it such a good um, contrast and that pop of color that, you know, Stephen West Project need. They need pops of color. And these are all very the same kind of tone. I really thought with that electric blue that it would, um, that that would be good enough but I almost need a very opposite end of the spectrum pop of color to really feel like it pulls it all together and really makes it that statement piece that I want it to be. So um, this one, again, it's Vertices Unite by Stephen West. You guys have seen it in process with me for the last you know, few months, and it's almost there. It's almost done. I'm really looking forward to having it done for sure. So close. Um, all the yarns again are hula hut yarn and uh, junk yarn, uh, mad science yarn, and um, dog star knits. So I think that's all of my um, different color combinations and stuff here. And I really, really like it. I just need that that bit of pizzazz at the end to make sure that it ties together. I am not looking forward to doing the end because the end is an I-cord bind off all the way around and it's gonna be brutal. It's probably gonna take me multiple days to do, but um, I think it will be worth it and it will look really, really cool in the end. So that's the plan on that one. I did buy some more yarn. Of course, I don't really need it, but I did, I feel like I kind of needed this. So I need to make another sweater that's like my turquoise one that I just finished. And that way I can kind of make it as I'm hashing out the pattern specifics. So I bought some more Brooklyn Tweed Loft. This time I bought it in the Barn Owl color. I thought that this would show the pattern of the um, cables really, really well. So I bought seven skeins of this, which the blue one only took six, but I figured I might want to make my turtleneck a little bit longer or um, like I used almost everything of the six skeins. So I wanted to have that seventh skein just in case I needed it for if I adjusted the way the turtleneck was. Even though I really like the turtleneck on that one, I still think that I want to make it a little bit bigger and try a little bit different I want it more like this, you know, drapey and more like this, where the other one's more like a mock turtleneck, which is great. It looks great. And I might have, um, you know, that's certainly an option, but I wanted to kind of see it with a longer, um, more slouchy turtleneck. So we'll have to give this, um, that extra skein will give me enough yardage to end up being able to do that for myself. Um, I don't have, they're not all the same dye lot, I guess. Um, I bought them from Twisted, which is here in Portland, and I just bought it online and then like picked it up at the store. But she did tell me that they had six of the same dye lot and then a seventh one of a different dye lot, and supposedly they're a little bit different. I don't know how different they are. Oh yeah, this is the other dye lot. And honestly, I don't think it's gonna matter. It's slightly tone slightly different but I can alternate skeins and I can save that odd one out for something um you know cuff or part of the sleeve or something like that where you wouldn't even notice it so I might just do you know cuffs in it or um 
the bottom or like I said, alternate skeins and it'll be fine. So I have seven skeins of that. I need to start um, winding them up, which I'm going to do today. As soon as we get done podcasting here, I'm going to do that today and actually sit down and start um, typing out some, the beginning parts of the pattern so that uh, I can actually start working up that beginning part. And then once that's done, then I can kind of type some more and we'll get, we'll get this going. My taxes are done. So that's a bonus. Uh, I was very, very stressed out about that and having minimal time. And I'm really glad to have that taken care of and finished. And, um, I want to get this onto paper. So, and, and before it starts to like vanish from my mind, I need to start working it up again so that I don't get, uh, get lost in the all the other things that are going on in the brain of mine um i am going to be publishing my socks too this upcoming week so these are the envious socks all my testers are done i should be getting these up on ravelry soon i will follow me on instagram and you guys will be able to i'll put posts and um everything there for when these go up so you guys can have an idea and that way if you are interested in these socks uh they're called envious and they will be ready um in by the end of the week probably hopefully fingers crossed anyway um that is kind of all i've got today guys i feel like it was really fast maybe i just like speed talked my way through it but that's all I have for knitting. I've been feeling kind of um, romantic lately. I don't know if that's the right, I guess it's probably the right word. I don't know. I go through these phases where all I want to read is Jane Austen. So I've been reading, uh, what did I just finish? Sense and Sensibility, Persuasion, um, Emma a while back and and then I want to read them and then I want to watch the movies and then I so one of my favorites is Persuasion and I think Persuasion gets a lot of um, it doesn't get as much excitement or interest as like Pride and Prejudice which also totally amazing for Jane for one of her most amazing books too don't get me wrong but Persuasion I feel like is under noticed and I just love it. And I also like, it's kind of cheesy, but I do like all the spinoff novels that they do sometimes. So there's like, you know, from the perspective of the gentleman, some current author taking the story and like rewriting it from the guy's point of view. So I read one of those and um, that was really fun. I'm watching it. I'm just feeling, feeling romantic lately and all I want to watch is those kinds of movies and I get in these little funks where that's what I do or all I want to read is those kinds of books. Do you guys get like that? Do you feel like there's points in your life where you're just like nostalgic for something or uh, want to be reminded of that youthfulness and the, the beginnings of love and all that stuff that just, you know, makes our, for late, for women more probably than guys, but all those beginnings, feelings in the relationship where there's the nerves and all that stuff that I just love that part of it. I don't, I didn't enjoy doing that part of it myself. <laughs> um, dating was not fun at all, but the simplicity of the, the dating that, um, in that, at that time, uh, was, is just beautiful. There wasn't, there wasn't all that pressure that you had to, you know, if a guy paid you attention, like that was where it was going, like it was going to marriage, you didn't need to worry about, you know, I don't know, it just seemed like there was less, um, I can't even describe it, but there's a lot of like, um, in and, like in and out of relationships these days. And, um, you know, I just loved how simplistic it was at that time and how when you fell in love you fell in love and and obviously this is very much from the point of view of you know no problems you're in this world I, I've always been fascinated with this world of 
I can be a lady and I don't have to work and all I can, you know, all I do all day long is embroider and play piano and um, knit and whatever and go to parties and, and wouldn't that be great? <laughs> It's like my ideal life, like dress up, go to parties and, um, you know, socialize and dance and, and embroider and knit and do all the things and not have to work. And, you know, somebody else watches my children. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I so should have been born uh, in that era. That would have been so fun. But knowing my luck, I would have been born to like a fishmonger or something like that <laughs> and not like a lady or a gentleman where I could go to all these parties It'd probably be poor and you know whatever anyway sorry you guys <laughs> get to see the goofy parts of me today but uh, yeah I've just been those are what I've been wanting to wanting to listen to and wanting to read so Anyway, let me know if you guys are interested in doing the pinguono along because I'm really, really thinking and feeling it. So let me know and we can get something started. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye.